All right, Jacksonville Jaguars, talking about where they go from here after a tremendous season. No one had you making the playoffs, especially uh, midway through the season. Find a way to make the playoffs, find a way to win a playoff game after being down 27 points, and even played the Chiefs relatively tough. If it wasn't for that fumble, uh, you know, maybe they find a way to win this game. I I still think the Chiefs win in that scenario, but it would have been close. It would have been a lot closer. So where did the Jaguars go from here? Well, let's just get into it. So what you see on the screen next to me is where they ranked in specific PFF categories. I think that's notable because we want to talk about where they're at before we talk about where they can improve and how they can get that next step to going from a, uh, you know, a, a a playoff team and a good playoff team to a great playoff team and potentially a Super Bowl contender in the murderer's row that is the AFC. So first is the passing game. Trevor Lawrence uh, got the Jaguars to 13th best passing according to PFF this season. And that's the first way, right? Lawrence continues to develop. I mean, that's how the Jaguars got from year one to year two in Lawrence's uh, career is simply from Lawrence getting better himself. I mean, the reality is for a young quarterback, uh, that's always the hope. You look at like the difference between the Jets and the Jaguars, the main difference between those two teams is Lawrence was really was good this year and Zach Wilson just did not develop and still sucked. I mean, that's kind of the thing is no matter what you do, you got to get the quarterback. The quarterback is the, what matters the most and Lawrence has t- taken tremendous strides and we assume could continue to grow. And so maybe the simple thing is maybe Lawrence takes that next step next year and goes from a, you know, good player to a pro bowler, uh, and that would definitely, you know, or maybe like an MVP candidate, potentially, there's that potential, and if it does happen, definitely, uh, you're looking at this team as a scary team, you have the, uh, interestingly, with the offensive line, run blocking was really bad, but pass blocking was good, so every now and then you get one of these teams that weirdly is good at one aspect, but not good at the other, you would assume if you can pass block, you can run block, but that's not always the case, it's different, so maybe you want to work on the run blocking, but at least the pass blocking is there, So, you know, interesting stuff that way. Um, The receiving game is also worth noting as it's 20th, but obviously one of the biggest additions is one they've already made. One of the biggest offseason moves is the move they made at the trade deadline, getting Calvin Ridley such a great move. Loved that move at the time and love it even more now that we've seen Jacksonville show that they're a good team is kind of one of my questions was how, and we'll get into it once we get to the cat space and stuff, is how much can this team really improve because they don't have a ton of cat space like they had last year because they spent a lot of it last year, but getting Calvin Ridley is kind of that way that they were able to get the big ticket, uh, you know, passing option and I do think that you saw in that Chiefs game kind of one of their weaknesses was lack of being able to attack down the field outside the numbers Ridley will be able to do that and could complete this roster which is you know a scary thought for teams in the AFC South um running game was good with Travis Etienne uh so you know uh he'll stay there nothing really of note in that scenario defense run defense graded well pass rush graded well coverage did not but I thought that once they kind of used Darius Williams as more of just an outside receiver, I thought they looked a lot better. I think the coverage was very good toward the end, and I expect it to actually be good next year. I do. So now let's get over to their free agents, who they have to re-sign. What you see is all of their notable free agents and how much money, uh, the number next to their name is, how many millions they're projected to get using the sports track projections. A couple I filled in myself because the sports track did not have projections there, but that's what you're looking at. Um, Also at the bottom of the screen, you notice 13, or not at the bottom of the screen, but at the bottom of the chart, you see uh, 13 million under the salary cap. That's definitely notable. And 60 million would be if they signed all these guys for their price tags, that's what they would have to spend. That feels scary but they don't actually have to sign a lot of these guys. I mean, for one thing, uh, you know, uh, Dewame Smoot, I don't know if he's getting $14 million. That's what they project. I don't know. Uh, I like him as a player. I don't know if you need to give him $14 million. Arden Key, you'd like to keep at $12 million. But I think that kind of goes to the other way this Jaguars team could improve is just the young guys playing better, not just with Lawrence, but also with their other number one overall pick, Trayvon Walker, who you know, has kind of become a meme on this channel of how often I uh, mock the Trayvon Walker draft pick. I really did not like it at the time. But what I always maintained was... 
he's going to be a guy who is not going to come into the league and play well right away, but there is potential that really probably in year three, he could have a Rashawn Gary type jump or a, uh, you know, really Rashawn Gary's the guy. It seems like year three is the guy when you draft these kind of pure athleticism type edge rushers. Takes them a couple of years, but eventually can come through. But maybe in year two, if he can do that, that's when you look at it and say, okay, he is someone who can, you know, be an impact player and maybe fill into that Arden Key role. I do think that, you know, he, I mean, the reality is all he has right now is a bull rush uh, walker. All he does is bull rush and Sometimes he gets to a guy who can't really keep up with that kind of strength, and he's able to get a pressure that way. Usually he doesn't, though. Uh, you know, again, been very good against tight ends for that very reason, and that's not like a slight. That's like he legitimately is good against tight ends, and there's value there. But um, the reality is he needs some. He needs to complete himself as a pass rusher, which is possible. So I'm not giving up on Walker just yet after a bad rookie season, and that's definitely a way where if he can develop into who Jacksonville hopes he can develop into, then you have him him next to Josh Allen, that could be scary. Um, Evan Ingram here is, you know, uh, an interesting factor as well. He's projected for $9 million. He was a key player for Jacksonville this season. He really was. He made some solid plays. And again, you also have Marvin Jones on this list a little bit lower. Those are guys that, you know, I think you'd like to keep, but do you have the money to do it? Worth mentioning, $13 million under the cap, uh, or 13 million over the cap, excuse me, does not mean that you are screwed and you have to start cutting guys. This is not hockey where they have this hard cap where it's very difficult to work around. In the NFL, the average team, in fact, spends over 10 million over the salary cap. So you're good. You're okay. You can spend over the cap. And this might be the time to do it when you have Trevor Lawrence on a rookie deal. But Personally, I would try to find a way to keep Evan Ingram, I think. I think he worked well in that system. Some other players that like, okay, you don't have to keep, but if you if you are going to get rid of, you have to find replacements for. You have Jawan Taylor, Andrew Wingard, uh, Adam Gotts, Got to, Gotsis, uh, Corey Peters, Chris Manhurts, Dan Arnold, and C.J. Beathard, their backup quarterback. Those are guys that you're going to have to find a replacement for if you let walk. So, you know, some money that they're going to have to spend there. Going to have to figure out a way to get some of this money. What I do is I just restructure, kick the can down the road a little bit, uh, except that you'll have a little bit of a setback once you have to start paying Trevor Lawrence, but maximize the Trevor Lawrence rookie window. Again, you see, it, the, I've said this in a couple of these videos, the four teams that are in the conference championship, three, only one of them is paying their quarterback right now. Burrow, Hurts, and obviously Purdy are not getting paid, but the 49ers aren't paying uh, Lance or Garoppolo either. Um, you know, Garoppolo's the highest paid guy, but he's still not getting a ton, like $7 million, something like that. Uh, so, you you know, not paying your quarterback is a very valid strategy, and when you're not paying the quarterback, building around them, that's what you want to do, and you especially think about, uh, you know, the one quarterback getting paid is Mahomes, who's obviously Mahomes. So, uh, you know, hopefully... In a couple of years, Lawrence is in the same conversation as Mahomes, and then it doesn't matter how much you're paying him because he's going to you know, take you to the conference championship every year anyway. Until then, build as good of a team around him as you can, and I think the way you do that is you uh, you know, find a way to keep some of these weapons is what I would do. And again, you got Calvin Ridley now. So you're getting better next year. You're, this is a team that I made four of these videos talking about the, uh, you know, the, the teams that lost in the divisional round and where, where do they go from here. The Jaguars, to me, feel like the only team that I'm like, they're definitively getting better this offseason because they're getting Calvin Ridley, who isn't just a great player, but he's a great player in a vitally important position. And I think he'll complete this receiving core, which is all re really felt like it was one it was kind of a number one uh, option away, and now they got that number one option. I'm so excited to see what the Jaguars do from here. They're a team that uh, definitely would not be shocked at all if they're back in the divisional round next year. But yeah, that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.